What's up guys? So this week I had to put a lower intake gasket on the 05 and I've already done a lower intake gasket but I was going to go ahead and film it anyway just because there are some differences between the 05, the Series 3 cars and the earlier 3800s which is what I originally did the other video on but I had some camera problems so I didn't get the whole thing uh, filmed but I'm going to go ahead and go through all the teardown and point out some differences and uh, kind of strap in because this is going to probably be a long video. Even just the teardown and prep was a lot of footage. So let's get to that first and then we'll come back and wrap it up. Okay, so. When I do these, I always start with removing the fuel rail. That is the very top piece that's easiest to get out. These fuel rails are pretty similar to the earlier 3800s. The only difference is they are returnless, so it means you only have the one hose attached to them. Now you can disconnect the hose from the rail and then pull the rail up, but what I generally do is just leave the hose attached and just swing the rail out of the way since you don't really need it completely out of the car. Um, the injectors will be stuck in the heads or intake manifold if you're doing a non-supercharged version like this. And uh, so I would suggest taking a small pry bar and what I'm trying to do is just going one injector at a time, trying to pry the bottom of it loose while pulling up slightly. You just have to be careful because these plastic injectors are pretty easy to break. I actually had a couple of the lower parts break on this one even. But then once you get it loose like this and you've got everything disconnected from the sides, the wiring harnesses and everything, then you can just take it and swing it right out of the way over here. And now that's not in your way. Next thing I'm doing here is I'm going to remove the booster hose from the back of the manifold here. There's a couple different ways to do this, but the easiest way I have found is to use a screwdriver to pop the plastic piece out of the back of the manifold and leave it attached to the hose. So you don't have to worry about the hose uh, splitting or that plastic piece breaking when you're trying to remove a stuck hose. Then of course, you're just gonna go around and unplug all the electrical connectors from everything. Um, here I'm unplugging the, uh, the EVAP purge solenoid and the EVAP hose that runs to the purge solenoid. The EVAP hose just has a plastic piece you can push in with a screwdriver or even your finger if you get lucky and it can pull it and then you can just pull it straight back which is what i'm doing right here never mind the orange cat photo bomb here then i'm going to go through and actually remove all of the eight millimeter bolts that hold the upper intake to the lower intake. There are also two 10 millimeter bolts. One's down here under the stud that holds the wiring harness bracket on. And then I am using the this magnetic tool to pick everything up just because it's easier that way and easier not to lose the, uh, the actual bolts that way. With all the bolts out, you can just pry it up a little bit. It will more than likely be a little stuck. Then just kind of wiggle and pull should come loose. Then all you have to do is just snake it out from under this overhead uh, wiring harness here, which is pretty easy to do. And I do remove these with the throttle body on them just because there's really no need to remove it. Then I'm going to just disregard the old 
gasket, but you do need to keep the little PCV tube that's stuck to the gasket. That tube's gonna need to be reinserted in the new one. Next, I'm removing the EGR line over here, which runs between the EGR valve itself and the lower intake manifold. It's just got one 13 millimeter bolt on one side and a 13 millimeter nut on the other side, but it will be tight even after you take those two sides loose to get it out. Just be very careful because they are really easy to break. Next, I remove the thermostat housing with the upper radiator hose still attached to it. That's just two 10 millimeter bolts and you can just tuck it down beside the exhaust to get it out of your way well enough to be able to take the manifold off. I also used a vacuum to get all the little pieces of leaves and other crap that was around the edges up before trying to remove the lower intake just to keep it from going down in the engine and causing more problems. You will also need to remove this upper motor mount bracket over on this side. You can leave the steel part of it there, but you will have to remove the aluminum because it just makes it a lot easier to get the lower manifold out. It's kind of in the way, kind of overlaps it. So you just take the dog bone off, which is what I'm doing right now. And I did actually do this earlier in the repair. So if you're noticing that some of the stuff looks out of order, some of the footage did get a little bit out of order, but it really doesn't matter which order some of this stuff is removed in. It just all has to come off to be out of the way so that you can do the manifold. These two upper bolts are 13s if I remember correctly, but don't hold me to that. And uh, you just take both of them out of where they bolt into the head right here. And then with all the lower stuff removed, the aluminum part of this mount bracket will come straight out. This rear bracket also has to come off. So you'll need to remove the two 10 millimeter bolts that go into the head on the bottom. There's one, uh, it's either an eight or a 10 millimeter bolt between the alternator support bracket and this bracket, and one 10 that usually holds the shield that goes around the EGR valve. Although on this car, that shield was missing anyway. Once those are out of the way, the bracket will lift right up and out of the way completely.
Now this is actually where I was removing the EGR tube, which I already went over earlier. Like I said, some of this footage did kind of get out of order. But it doesn't really matter once again, which way you go with that. Now with these, you do need to find these two hidden bolts. There are two that are inside the intake. They will be under oil. So you'll want to soak some oil up out of those two corners to be able to get to those. Then you just got to go through and remove all of the lower intake manifold bolts. I do like to go in sort of a circular pattern when removing these similarly to how you install them just to help you know minimize the chance of it warping or having some kind of problem like that when you're removing them. This back 10 millimeter bolt will be very hard to get to. It's actually a 3 8 bolt um, if the alternator is still in place, but you can get to it with a wobble or a universal. Um, but if you have too much trouble in that corner, just remove that alternator and you'll have no issue at all getting to it. Then once you've removed all of the bolts, it'll be time to pry up the lower intake. And if you've already drained all the coolant, which you should have by this point, this shouldn't make too much of a mess. Then you'll have to just pick up and wiggle and pull to the right to get the manifold to come off of the coolant elbow, just like that. And then it should come right out. Then you just have to go in. I'm, I'm actually prying the old gaskets out. This engine looks like it had the original uh, AC Delco plastic lower intake manifold gaskets. And that's what comes on most of these older ones. But if you want a good upgrade and what I'm going to be going back with on this one is if you look for the AC Delco part number for the 06 and up 3.8, it is a factory aluminum lower gasket, which is a much better quality. And that's what I'm going to be putting back in this. This did actually have a couple breaks in the plastic already. So that shows me where my problem was coming from. Then I'm just going to wipe all the surfaces down and go over them with a razor blade and make sure everything's clean. There's no gasket left over and everything's ready for the new gaskets. Once everything's cleaned off, you're going to go back in with your side gaskets first. These actually will sit in two little holes in the block that will hold it in place. And then you just have to tuck the corners under where the heads are. So no big deal there. I usually also put a little bit of RTV uh, on top of these, mostly in the corners where they meet the actual side gaskets there. And here are the 06 up aluminum gaskets. They are aluminum with O-rings. They are quite a bit stronger than the plastic style that the older 3.8s had, but they completely retrofit. So you can use them on any 3.8 going back, I know, all the way to 97. Now I've got some lower intake preps. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and replace the gasket on this coolant crossover section. And of course, the first thing that happened was the rearmost bolt broke off. Fortunately, the bolt was actually seized into the cover, not into the manifold itself. So once I was able to get the cover off, I was able to unscrew the rest of the bolt and replace it with a bolt that I had, so no problem there. Then I'm just taking a, some Scotch-Brite pads on a small die grinder here 
and prepping all the surfaces on the manifold and cleaning them, making sure they're good and clean and flat so, so that we're ready to put the new gaskets, or ready to put it on the new gaskets. And of course I did the same thing to the other side and to the flat parts on the bottom. And did the entire top also, just to make sure there was no trash or anything that would cause any problems with sealing on it as well. After this, it's really just a matter of reversing all of the steps, take it apart and you just reassemble and you're good to go. I will post the torque sequence and torque spec though for this lower intake for when you go to put it back on. So there you go. I'm sorry that I didn't get the reassembly um, on video, but like I said, I had some camera problems. My GoPro died sort of halfway through and I was very limited in how much time I could spend getting that done because that is my primary car that I drive all the time now. So I needed it back together pretty quick. Um, but just a few changes there. I will say the getting the lower intake out and back in the way that I did it is kind of tricky. It's really tight. So you have to put it just so. If you want to make that easier, take the alternator off before you start the job. That will actually make it a lot easier, but I just, I did it the fast way. But hopefully that was kind of informative for you. If it was, drop this video a like, um, drop me a comment and let me know what you thought. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching and peace.